Hello friends, this video on heat part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us try measuring temperatures of various objects which you see on the screen. So how much do you think would be the temperatures of each of these objects? So how do we measure the temperature of these objects? You can do this by using thermometer. So we are going to discuss about thermometer in detail in the next section. So just to give you a rough idea, a hot cup of coffee might read around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. So that would be the approximate temperature of a hot cup of coffee. If you talk about boiling water, it will go somewhere around 100 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be hotter than the cup of coffee. If you talk about the normal body temperature that is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, you talk about the uh, temperatures of a candle so a candle can be very hot you know the temperature of the candle flame can even go up to 60 600 degrees Celsius so that that can be really really hot if you talk about an ice cream an ice cream can be very cold it can be as less as 6 degree to 10 degree Fahrenheit so if you actually convert this into Celsius so it will go in negatives so in Celsius it is even lower because the Celsius scale itself starts from a little lesser value, right? So that's how if you compare the temperatures of day and night, so there also you will see a lot of difference. Maybe the temperature during the daytime is somewhere around, say it might be around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, then temperature at night could be around 25 degrees Celsius or so. So again, the temperature or the weather conditions differ from one place to another. So when you see, when you read your newspapers, so every day you will see there would be a, a weather column where it mentions the temperature for that particular day. Or if you ever watch news on TV, there also they tell about uh, the temperatures at various locations how much is the temperature at which place for that particular day and you'll see that the temperature varies from one place to another so normally whenever you talk about temperature uh, the discussion will be incomplete if you are not mentioning the scale of measurement of temperature because a lot depends on that only the values don't speak a lot so whether it is 70 degree or 100 degree or 200 degree that really doesn't you know, tell a lot about it as long as you do not mention Celsius or Fahrenheit scale. So now we are going to talk about thermometer because this is the device which actually helps us to measure the temperature. So thermometer is the device to measure temperature. So here in this section we will see how to read a thermometer, what is the thermometer made up of, what are the different types of thermometer that are available. Now the first type of thermometer that we will discuss is a clinical thermometer and it is used to it is normally used to measure the temperature of human body and in fact measuring temperature of human body is a, a very important application of thermometer because whenever we fall ill Measuring body temperature is something which is very common and at the same time which is very important. So if you look at this thermometer, it, it reads from 35 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius. So you see it's a very small range actually. It, it doesn't read over a longer range because so when you talk about the Celsius scale, it can even start from 0 degrees Celsius. It can even start from negative values. But here it is just from 35 degrees to 42 degrees. Now do you know why? Because this thermometer is used to measure human body temperature. And normally the human body temperature lies within this range. Because if the body temperature falls below this temperature or it goes beyond this temperature, in that case the human beings really don't survive. So this is the range of temperature where uh, the human body can have. So this, temp uh, this thermometer is spe specifically designed to measure the body temperature. So <clears throat> let us look at the construction of a clinical thermometer. What is it made up of? So if you look at the thermometer, it is nothing but a long narrow glass tube. This tube is made up of glass. And what do you have inside the tube? Now on one side you have this kind of a structure which is called bulb. So this is bulb and this is the long narrow glass tube. Now inside this bulb you have a liquid which is present there and what is this liquid? This liquid is mercury. 
so mercury is the only non metal which is liquid at room temperature so now this mercury has got some special properties because of which it is used in the thermometer and besides this we have a small shining thread of mercury which can be seen along the length of the tube so as you see here this is the length of the tube right so how do we measure temperature now whenever you put this thermometer inside the body like preferably it is always put under the tongue so what happens is this uh, bulb portion is actually in contact with the tongue right so the mercury gets heated up and mercury expands so what happens the level of mercury increases now it goes up to a certain level and stops there and wherever it stops that is the reading of the temperature so throughout the length of this um, thermometer you will be able to see a shiny thread like structure that shiny thread is nothing but that is mercury so this is the property of mercury that it is very shiny in nature so that is also one positive thing about mercury because of which it is used in the construction of thermometer besides all this there is also a kink present here something like this so you if you closely observe a clinical thermometer you will see a structure a bend like this now what is this bend or why do we have this kink because this kink does not allow the mercury to fall back on its own that is a reason why you would have seen that before whenever you have to measure the temperature how do you use the thermometer you take it out from the box of the thermometer you jerk it properly why do you jerk it so that the mercury level comes down so now mercury level should be below 35 degree so it should be somewhere here so once the mercury level comes down then you put this thermometer under the tongue of the patient and then what happens the mercury expands and therefore the level will again rise maybe it will go up to here or here or here you measure the temperature and then the mercury will not fall back on its own why due to the presence of this kink so this kink doesn't allow mercury to fall back on its own now you might ask I and mean, what is the need of having a kink why do we do not want the mercury level to fall back on its own because if there is no kink what will happen is as soon as you remove the thermometer or as soon as you take the thermometer out of your mouth the mercury level will fall back because when you bring it out obviously this bulb is no more in contact with the hot uh, object right it is no more in contact with your tongue so the mercury level will fall back so how will you read the temperature so in order to prevent that scenario the kink is present so that to whatever level the mercury has gone it will remain there until and unless you physically jerk the thermometer to bring the mercury level down so this is how the basic construction of a clinical thermometer is and the uh, uh, scaling you have already seen it starts from 35 and it is only up to 42 degree celsius so what is the basis of construction of a thermometer the basis is that volume of a liquid varies with temperature and which is the liquid that is being used here the liquid is nothing but mercury so as you heat the mercury the mercury expands and when the mercury expands its uh, its level increases it tends to go high up on the thermometer scale besides mercury alcohol is also used as a liquid in the thermometer because mercury and alcohol both have many similar properties and these days the use of alcohol in the thermometer is more encouraged because uh, mercury as such is a very uh, poisonous uh, non metal so in case the thermometer breaks so disposing that harmful mercury becomes a challenging task so in order to avoid that usage of alcohol in thermometers is encouraged these days thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again